Sony's DualShock 4 for the PS4 is a fine controller, but what if you want something that'll give you an edge in your games? Well, I have two from Scuf Gaming, the Impact and the Infinity 4 PS Pro. I put both through extensive testing by playing Titanfall 2, Overwatch, Bloodborne, and Horizon Zero Dawn to find out if they're worth their hefty price tag. And they just might be if you're looking for an advantage in competitive or challenging games. The Scuf Impact starts at $140 and takes on a slightly larger body similar to the Xbox One controller. The audio jack placement may make it difficult to connect audio devices that have thick casing or a 90 degree notch at the input. The Scuf Infinity 4 PS Pro starting at $130 is nearly identical to the DualShock 4 in shape and size. You can customize their colorway and add accessories on Scuf's website, but it'll cost you a little bit more. Both have modular designs. The analog sticks can be swapped out for ones that are either concave, convex, or ones that protrude out further, but they are sold separately. It might be a little scary to pull them out, but a little force will work. The analog sticks themselves feel much smoother and less resistant to move around than the DualShock 4. Both come packaged with swappable L2 and R2 trigger extensions, which we used almost exclusively since the extra surface area made trigger pulls a bit easier. The controllers feature grippy surfaces on the handles and thumbsticks, which is one clear advantage. Face buttons, L1, R1, and the D-pad on both felt very similar to the DualShock 4. Using the tool package with both controllers, you can adjust the trigger stops behind L2 and R2 if you prefer a shorter throw. Underneath the L2 and R2 caps is a hair trigger mechanism that will lighten the resistance of a trigger pull. These can help with twitch reactions. However, the most attractive feature is the programmable paddles. The Impact features four paddles and the 4PS Pro has two paddles. Both controllers' paddles can easily be mapped to act as any other button using the electromagnetic key. With paddles, you never have to take your thumb off the right stick, allowing you to look and aim without obstruction. Take note that the two inner paddles on the Impact are a bit tough to press, so you may not want to map timely actions to them. Overall, the paddles felt a little stiff, so spamming them is hard, but they do feel solid and tactile. Now that we know what these controllers have to offer, let's get into how they perform in games. In Titanfall 2, you're constantly jumping, strafing, and wall running. Its fast pace and quick movement means you best keep your head on a swivel. However, that can be difficult with the default controls where jumping is mapped to the X button. By using one of the paddles to act as X, changing direction while jumping and connecting wall runs was indisputably easier and extremely beneficial. We also never had to stop moving the camera to reload. The smoother, nimble analog sticks also improved granular movements for precise aiming. In Overwatch, a game with unique character ability sets, I programmed the jump action and ultimate ability to the paddles. Bunny hopping while in a firefight was very advantageous. Floating with my jump jets as Pharah while being able to shoot or use my concussive blast simultaneously gave me an upper hand. I could also launch a barrage without having to take my thumb off the right stick which also proved useful for pulling off a Dragon Strike as Hanzo or locking targets for High Noon as McCree. Overwatch does let you fully customize your controls, but not having to make any compromises with other actions was useful. The features of these controllers were a little less important in Bloodborne, since the game relies more on timing and battle tactics. The camera follows enemies that are locked on, so having the dodge action mapped to a face button didn't hold us back from surviving and taking down the creatures of Yharnam. We did find it helpful to have the consumable and items action designated to a paddle in case we had to dodge at a moment's notice. While Horizon Zero Dawn isn't a competitive shooter or as unforgiving as Bloodborne, moving the camera and simultaneously dodging in the heat of battle was one gripe I had with the game's controls. Now with a paddle acting as circle, I could dodge enemy attacks while moving the camera, a significant advantage for avoiding damage, escaping, or getting in a better position. Both the Scuf Impact and Infinity 4PS Pro provide distinct advantages over the DualShock 4. The extra grip was handy, especially for the thumbsticks, and the smooth movement of those sticks helped with precise aiming. Most importantly, the programmable paddles were easy enough to use, but extremely beneficial in the games we played since we never had to take our thumbs off the sticks. However, if you don't feel the need for these features, then these controllers may not make much of a difference for you. And since they're both priced well over $100, you might want to think twice about pulling the trigger. If you found this review informative, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here at GameSpot. 
and stay tuned for our review of the Nacon Revolution and Razer Raiju PS4 controllers. Thanks for watching.